What's up, everybody, and welcome back to this week's episode of The Blade Game. This Sunday had two massive games. EG had their win streak snapped, and TL had their mediocrity streak extended with a loss to CLG. The struggling super team, after going 3-0 on opening weekend, has gone 1-1 for the last four weeks. So, no surprise, they are who we are talking about this weekend. There wasn't a ton of specific player flame in the thread. Bjergsen got the worst of it, and there were a lot of snarky comments, but a lot more of the combo centered around the construction of the roster as a whole. It's a little hard to do a blame game on that, though, so we will be looking at Bjergsen and the rest of the team's play to see who deserves blame for this loss and then maybe a little bit for the season as well. So let's dig into it. Team Liquid drafted the pretty early game centric dive comp that wants to play around bot lane using their mid counter pick for team comp and a self-sufficient pushing top lane. CLG try to interrupt the game plan of TL with an early bot lane gang but end up trading suns which is good in theory for Team Liquid if they can repeatedly attack bot lane from the mid and jungle. The problem is that Bjergsen gets pala fucked in mid lane. Bjergsen wants to trade his HP for push and force both mids to take early recalls. However, Palafox wins this trade so hard that he can tank minions for a few seconds so that the wave freezes on his side. He's then able to safely farm near his turret for the next minute, despite how low his HP is, until he can get Lost Chapter on his first back while Birg is stuck on components. Fortunately for Team Liquid, the bot lane plan is still going well, with Santorin's repeat gang finding first blood. The wave state also gives a huge CS lead to Han Sama, and 10 minutes in, Whippo's counterpick in the top side has had shove and is grabbing turret plates in a CS lead. Even with mid lane not going great, a 2k gold advantage at 10 minutes for this team comp is actually pretty good. However, Team Liquid make the baffling decision to try and break mid free from its struggles rather than continuing working on top or bot lane. If you want, Lisk can always just drop Pryo and fall a little bit further behind in CS to make these plays in the side lane. Instead, Team Liquid make repeated attempts on mid lane. First time, CoreJJ just fails his hex flash over the wall to telegraph it. The second time he succeeds, but Palafox is able to easily scoot away. This is immediately followed by a skirmish that breaks out around mid over a scuttle crap where Palafox and Contracts combo well together. And there's another quick look 13 minutes in. Team Liquid should have skipped almost all of these plays and instead just accepted the fact that Bjergsen lost lane instead of trying to bail him out. At the same time, things were beginning to go off the rails in these side lanes as well. Santorin doesn't stick around long enough to protect Whippo since he needs a couple more autos to finish the turret after the Rift Herald charge and they give a kill back to Contracts. On the weak side of the map, Hans and Core JJ lose almost all their summoners while pressuring around the turret, giving Misfortune some breathing room. They come into the second dragon contest without having been able to grow their lead at all. I actually really like this decision to try and instigate Palafox, and people tunnel on Bjerg being a little low mana, which is true, but I have no idea why Santorin just doesn't insta ult here. Both to CC Bjerg, but also knock up the Alistair to stop a three-man pull. This not quite all in is stuffed by CLG who grab the dragon and get out. Oh, also, if Whippo didn't super greed the Raptors here and waste six seconds on them, he's in range probably to alt over the top and kill Palafox as well. The game is beginning to feel a little doom for Team Liquid here, but they managed to find a good dragon fight 20 minutes in. This comes off the back of a nice Bjergsen flank and stops the dragon stacking, as well as gives them enough of a gold lead to have control over the game. Unfortunately, they stall out over the next five minutes and some of their TP plays don't actually work. At 25 minutes in, CLG go for what I honestly think is a pretty awful Baron call. They're not doing it super quick and their HP bars are starting to get low. I don't know why they feel like they need to force here, but they do. And Bjergsen again finds a really good angle into the fight and nearly one shots two members of CLG and stasis is through the bullet time. The rest of his team though thinks they need to go in and save Private Bjergsen. Core JJ outright dies and Whippo is half health, giving Palafox an angle for a scoop that Hansama fails to flash properly. From here, Team Liquid realize that they're probably not going to be winning team fights anymore and opt into the split push Whippo strategy, which is actually working pretty well. 29 minutes in, Whippo is about to take the inhibitor by himself, but the three man of Team Liquid overplay their hand. Core JJ hooks in to stop Hansama from getting comboed, though Hans arguably could have just popped heal and gotten out and needs to insta flash out, but for some reason also insta stopwatches and allows CLG to get on top of him. These kills give CLG Baron, despite Whippo just getting bot and hib, and the game is basically over from here. So where does that leave the blame? Starting with Bjergsen, I think he definitely deserves some. He clearly got rocked in lane, and if you aren't being charitable, you could speculate that his comms are potentially what drew the rest of Team Liquid towards him in that 10 minute window. At the same time, he was the clear standout in every single team fight, and Whippo, Santorin, and Core JJ made massive mistakes in them. Whippo at least played the 1v1 well, and Core helped get that lead in the bot lane, and Whippo did provide a win con that they just didn't capitalize on. I know it's basically a meme on this 
show to say it was a team problem, but I think in this instance, it really, really was. And in a lot of ways, this game is the perfect microcosm for the Team Liquid season. They're fairly proactive, they jump out to an early lead, and then they close it out cleanly, or they fumble the game away with a series of misplays. They have absolutely incredible players and are head and shoulders above the rest of the league at goal difference at 15, which speaks to their individual talent. However, they're absolutely a team that is worse than the sum of their parts. They'll win games if they win draft, they'll lose games if they lose draft, and they'll almost never really deviate from that or overperform. I didn't really love their draft this game, but they had all the tools to win it from multiple positions in the game. There's no reason that they can't win with a slightly losing mid lane. There's no reason that they can't win at split pushing and backdooring and whatnot. There's no reason they can't win through clean execution of team fights, but they just failed on all three of those fronts. If you ignore week one and look at the team's records, Team Liquid is dead center of the league. If you're a Team Liquid fan, the copium angle is that there's still a chance that you iron out these coordination issues, which theoretically are easier things to fix than players or skill or champion pool problems. There's no individually weak links on the team, but it's late enough in the season now that you should be sweating because they haven't fixed these problems yet. This week's comment of the week award goes to Saint Fuzzy Slippers. He posted this comment after EG's win on Saturday, beginning to buy into the hype. So there you go, everyone. Now you know who to blame for why they lost on Sunday. That's gonna do it for this episode of The Blame Game. Thank you all so much for watching. This weekend, it's Star Guardian weekend at the LCS on Saturday. I think there's gonna be some dope shit at the tailgate. I don't really know what's going on yet. Um, I'm just wondering how I can contribute to the Weebery, what we're gonna do for it, and I'm looking forward to it. I'll see you guys there. Hello, I'm out front of the LCS. I'm sitting down because it's a hot day in Los Angeles and uh, I need to keep cool. And you know what else needs to be cool? Your computer, which is why you should check out Alienware because they've got some of the best cooling tech in the biz for both desktops and notebooks so that your computer can stay cool while you're staying cool by having an Alienware, which is also cool, and watching this content that is also cool. And you ever just say a word so often, uh, so many times that it starts to lose, uh, there's like a like significance, it's like starts to sound weird in your mouth and like, there's a word for that, and I, um, anyway, there's a link in the description below. Check it out.